Hello there Unity developers! Today I will show you how the procedural houses in Black Forest are done. I'm using PGG and 3D Forge's exterior village kit and it gives me all these different styles. Every house looks a bit different. They're all procedurally generated so not much work to create thousands of different houses all looking individual. And here I will show you how they are done. First of all, you need to get the procedural generation grid from the Unity Asset Store, which is the tool that allows all the procedural generation and placement of the prefabs that we will be using. The second asset that I'm using is 3D Forge's Village Exteriors Kit, which is a set of modular building parts I'm sure other modular sets will work as well, but this is the one I have and I've always found it to be very good, very useful and it has all the small pieces and parts that I will be using. Using my small hut as the example, here's how everything is set up. First, what you will notice is that I have a grid that's actually larger than the hut. And there's a reason to that you will see in a second why. The second thing you will notice is that I have a number of fields because I generate individual parts of the house separately. That's because during construction they come up one by one. So let's start with maybe the most simple, which is the walls. And this explains how the grid is laid out as well. I generate a simple full set of walls and the procedural generator has a feature for that. You can see the rules here on the right. First of all, I have a base set of walls. That's just the normal solid wall I have all around. And then I have a spawner for windows, which has a limited spawn count. So I don't have only windows all around and it also removes the wall wherever I spawn a window because the 3 d Forge prefabs have a combination of wall and window. If you have detached windows without walls, of course you just add them. And the next is that I spawn an entrance and the entrance is basically done with the same spawning rules as you can see here and they're all basically the same. I will explain in a moment. And after the entrance, I spawn a door at the entrance position. I'm using here the tag feature of a PGG, which can add tags to a cell. And that's how a lot of this actually works. So when I spawn a wall, I set the tag of the cell to wall. And that tells the generator that there's a wall in the cell. And then I can spawn windows. So this has a random selection of the, of the window pieces that I have so that I get a nice mix of different windows here. And then I will spawn this in a random location wherever there's a wall. And the entrance works the same way. And then I have the basic layouts of the whole thing done. And then I can spawn a door and say, Wherever the tag door is set, which is set in the entrance spawner, then I know that there's the door here. There's only one entrance door. I have a limited spawning count. I could set two maybe if I wanted two entrance or randomly between one and two, but in my house I always have one entrance. So I spawn exactly one entrance. The cell gets the tag door, and then I can simply spawn the door in the cell that contains the tag door and it will always be in the right location. And then I also do nice things like spawning window lights which turn on at night. It's a prefab I made with a light and a small script that turns them on and off at night. And I can just spawn them wherever the cell contains the tag window. So I know that there's a window here and I just position them correctly so that they are nicely in front of the window. And I also spawn an entrance area, which is an invisible prefab I'm using. But this one tells the NPC pathfinders that this is where the exit and entrance to this house is. 
So you can also do things that feed into the gameplay of your game. And that's basically it. It's very simple. Now, the interesting part is here in how I spawn the base walls. I'm using a built-in feature of PGG called the wall Pacer, And I spawn walls here, 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 and here, there, well, all around, basically. And the wall placer module simply moves them to the edge of the grid. And I spawn them on these cells for two reasons. The first is, this way, I have exactly one wall in each cell. If I spawned them on the outside of a house, as you would think at first, if I spawned them, you know, all around the center, because that's what I need, I would have two walls in this place. The cell would have two walls. PGG can do that, but then it becomes difficult to understand what this cell is. For example, in this generator, the door spawned here in the corner. So this cell would have the tag door, but I wouldn't know if the door is to this side or to this side. So that's why I spawn the door here. And that way I know the door is here and not there. And that's a simple trick to make your life easier. And in the next field I have a frame. The frame is a very simple spawner. I have one of these two frames which is randomly picked. They are contained in my prefab set. And I spawn one of them and then I just move it correctly so that's in the center because I'm spawning it in ordered mode so it spawns in zero zero there's only one and then I just move it to the center of my building there might be another way to do it but this one works well for me and then I go and add some more decoration so in this field I have a chimney the chimney is a simple field modification that says okay if there's a wall because I don't want to spawn it in front of a window or in front of the door then spawn once chimney I'm using random cell check mode here so it's spawned in a random position so that I'm not starting at zero zero going through and finding the first felt field because then it would always be you know somewhere near the corner I go randomly through the cells and the first cell that matches gets the chimney and the chimney has its own tag so now this cell is tagged chimney and then I can spawn the upper parts and even a small smoke particle system just by looking for this chimney tag and that's how that works and in a similar way I can spawn props around the house so here's a few props that randomly spawn around the house. There is just a few simple spawners there. It's just a collection of different things, like a few firewood uh, pieces. There will always be one I pick randomly among all the different prefabs I have. And it will always spawn in a cell with the tag wall but not at the chimney because the chimney takes space outside the house so it would clip into it and it will not spawn in a cell that contains another prop because every cell, uh, every spawner here sets the prop tag and this way I don't have two props in the same cell because I go through randomly. And then there's a spawning probability that says sometimes I don't spawn it at all. And the rest is just to move it around a bit. There's a bit of random rotation so that it sits there a bit more organic and natural. And this way, whenever a house is uh, regenerated, the firewood is in a different place. And I, then I do the same with uh, some containers, so some boxes and barrels, you know, something like that. And again, they have a probability, so sometimes they spawn and sometimes they don't. And then I have some furniture where I'm a bit uh, more intelligent. 
and I want to spawn this uh, near the door. So there should be a table uh, to the left or right of the door. It shouldn't be at the back of the house. And so what I'm doing is I'm spawning it at the door and then I'm uh, moving it to some offset. And again, I don't spawn it where there is already a prop. I don't spawn it where there is um, where there's the chimney. I do spawn it in front of uh, of windows and so on. And then with a bit of an offset, I'm moving it right next to the door. So all of this is a bit of fiddling till you get it right, but you have a preview mode, so it it really works nice, and you can play around with it until it works. And you see the furniture is not at the back of the house, but near the door. And that's how you can add some props. And then I have a roof. And that uses a similar trick than um, the frame for the main part. And that's very simple. So again, I spawn just one in ordered mode, move it to the center of the house, and that's that. But then I also have uh, these uh, side parts, um, whatever you call them in English actually. So these triangle parts I spawn as well as part of the roof. I could spawn them as part of the wall, but um, I'm using them as part of the roof because that's easier to do for me. And then I also have these dormers. Again, I have a set of three. I pick one of them at random and then I spawn exactly one and uh, with a probability of 0 to 5 so most of the times the small house doesn't have a dormer larger houses have a different higher probability so that they have dormers more often and this one has a fairly high random offset so that it moves quite a bit to the left and right and of course it can spawn on both sides of the building whatever the randomizer comes up with. So now it's spawned on this side. And then I also add these extensions, these canopies. And again, they are randomly selected from a set of canopies that are in my prefab set. And again, they have a spawning probability and uh, this time 0 for 2, so a bit more higher. And, you know, small tip of the hat to Douglas Adams. Uh, so sometimes they show up, sometimes I, they don't. And they also said by their spawning rules that they can spawn in front of the windows, they don't spawn where the chimney is, and also they spawn where props are, because their purpose is to protect something from rain, isn't it? So they will always spawn above some props, so like here, above these barrels, so that it looks like they serve a purpose. So that is how the basic house is built. But in my game Black Forest, houses are constructed and they can be damaged and they can be destroyed. So I need a bit more than just that. What I'm doing is uh, again doing that with PGG. And so I have a few more modifiers here. This is the ghost arrow. This is just for the ghost mode. So when you are placing houses, it indicates where the entrance is because it's when you're in ghost mode, it's shown in this uh, transparent green material and it can be difficult to see where the door is. So I added this arrow and and that's all. It's very simple. I know where my door is. So I just check for this tag. And then I move the prefab into a good position and rotation so that it shows to the door and it's that simple. And this is in a different field so that I can turn it on and off when I'm entering or exiting ghost mode. And the same is true for this construction props. So let me turn off these others so you can see it more clearly. When a building is under construction you see there's a number of construction materials and tools scattered around the house and uh, they are only visible while the house is being built and that's why I have them in a separate container so I can toggle them on and off. And this is again just a simple field modificator with just 
a couple random props and uh, random spawning and and there's uh, a neighbor cell check here which says uh, spawn them at the outer edges of the grid it doesn't spawn inside the house it only spawns when one of the neighbor cells is outside of the grid and that's how you get uh, a simple selector for things that are on the edge of the grid and a couple more rules like i don't uh, spawn them where uh, props are where the chimney is because during construction they will appear and would clip into these things and I also spawn invisible work spots, which is where the NPCs building the house will move and have this little building animation. So again, I simply have an empty prefab there. I check where are my walls, windows and doors. I don't put it at the chimney again for a clipping issue. And uh, here for this, I have a fixed count because there's a fixed number of workers. Um, so I ensure that I have the exact number of work spots that I want and as you can see you can add not just visuals but also game logic with uh, with the PGG uh, to your procedurally generated houses. Right, so on to the next. Uh, there's also small things like this construction dirt which I will be adding and so on. So you can do a lot with this. Let's go back to the last field. In my game, houses can also be ruined. So I have a completely separate field modifier for that. And that's just, that's just a set of random pieces uh, of trash and uh, broken and individual windows. It has its own spawn rules, which essentially ensures that all this stuff is you know, randomly rotated and scattered around in different ways. And I have a slightly different selection of, of prefabs for this. Um, so there's no glass in the windows and so on. This is not perfect by any means. You see there's no furniture or interior because in my game, most of the time, these destroyed buildings are demolished and replaced uh, very fast. They are not on the screen very long. So uh, I've opted to not make it too difficult uh, to not clutter up the view. But anyway, there's more that you could do if you wanted to, to make it even more convincing. And here I just put some random pieces of uh, floor and wall and uh, you know broken doors and so on so it all looks a bit broken and thrown around and that's how the procedural houses in black forest are done and how you can do it in your own game thank you